Come on, Celebration Church Scoreboard Sunday, one service. God is moving. We love to just share the winds of what God is doing. We have a bunch of witnesses of God's goodness, faithfulness, victories. Uh, man, so many things happening, and I'm just going to pass it off to these guys right away. We have about seven testimonies, so again, stay standing if you can. If you need to be seated, that's all right. Give it up for Brogan starting us off. Howdy. So I'm Brogan. I attend Celebration Youth. Um, before I share my testimony, I'm just going to share some interesting facts about mental health. About 15% of people between the ages of 10 through 19 experience a mental health disorder. 42% of high school students felt constant, constantly sad or hopeless. 29% experienced poor mental health. 22% seriously considered attempting suicide. 10% attempted suicide. I was going to be a, a statistic, a number. One year ago, this past Wednesday, was the day I was going to attempt suicide. I was dealing with depression, anxiety, anger. I was fighting addictions and bad habits. That Wednesday, I walked into school expecting it to be my last day of school forever. But something was different about that day. I saw Josh Trifonov, my football coach, screaming at the top of his lungs about the gospel. I did not care whatsoever. I just wanted to end it all. After school and football practice, I came home ready to take my life. I remember crying in my bed, just planning out the scenario. But before I was ready to take my life, before, but before I was going to take my life, I got a text from Josh saying, come to youth. To be honest, I have no idea why I went to youth that night. I went to youth and I felt the Holy Spirit in a way that I cannot explain or believe. I, I felt loved, I felt saved, and I felt the, uh, the peace of the Holy Spirit. And yes, I was crying like a baby. First John chapter four, verse 19. We love because he first loved us. God created, us, God created this entire universe and he knew he needed one of you. You are not a number. You are someone that was created in the image of God. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Brenda Leonard. I recently went to Cuba on a mission trip. Pastor Josiah asked me to share my testimony at a local church. My topic was on how I got married at 21 years old. I had two children. I ended up in an abusive marriage and then ended up in divorce when I was 27 years old. I was a single mom for eight years. I was broken, afraid, and lost. I shared that when I found Jesus and he found me, he changed my life for better. The part I was most excited about going to Cuba was to see where my grandfather lived in an orphanage when he was eight years old. He was a Russian immigrant that he had to stay in Cuba for three years while his mother came back to, Amer to become American citizen. I also got to see the church where my grandfather's mother married an American in Havana. The thing that, was, that brought me most to tears when I was leaving Cuba and the officer stamped my passport, I thought back to when my grandfather must, how he must have felt when he was reunited with his mother and he started his new life in America. Thank you, Celebration Church, for allowing me this experience. Hello, everyone. My name is Jazz Ramirez, and I'm a senior at Fairville High School, and I'm a part of Celebration Youth. I grew up in a broken home, never really witnessed love between my parents or learned what a normal family looked like. As I went on through middle school and parts of high school, I was trying to find a home out of anything I could think of, whether that be friends, parties, boys, sports, etc. Trying to find comfort out of these things was never a success for me. I always ended up empty-handed no matter how many parties I went to, how many boys I talked to, or how many medals I was able to get. At the end of the day, I was faced with addiction and self-hatred. I knew who God was at the time, but I never felt like I was capable or worthy of having a relationship with Him. One night, my friend Gabby sparked up the idea to check out Celebration Youth, since we saw a bunch of guys at our school posting about it, and we thought it looked like a lot of fun. Little did I know that my life was about to change forever. 
I loved youth so much, we kept coming back, bringing more and more friends with. I gave my life to Christ on November 8th of 2023. I found a home in Celebration Youth and life through Jesus. For the first time ever, I was absolutely sure that I was in the right place. I had the sweetest friendships made through Christ, and I finally felt like I belonged. Thessalonians 5.11, therefore encourage one another and build one each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Jesus brought me people that led me to him and people that showed me that I was loved by not only them, but by the Lord himself. People cared about me and encouraged me to continue to chase after the Lord, even when I was too far, when it felt like I was too far gone. The friends you surround yourself with matter. Find the people you see Jesus in. I'm Jen, I'm part of Deliverance Ministry. We had an emotionally tough two-year journey with IVF. I kept hearing from the Lord, hold steadfast, and I'm more than able. God blessed our family with twin girls less than four weeks ago. This journey to this blessing has been affirmed with visions, prayers, and declarations of God's word from members of this church. The enemy tried to break us down, but we held steadfast. And now we have two more kingdom builders to raise up in the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Good morning. Uh, we're at Tony. Sandy Frank, and we just want to share that uh, in, the, in November it will be three years since Tony was um, diagnosed with the glioblastoma, which is a very aggressive uh, cancer of the brain. It was in his right, right frontal lobe. So after having surgery, Tony followed up with radiation and chemo, and then about four or five months after that, uh, there was a recurrence of the cancer, so he had to have another brain surgery. Um, Anyway, one night after we were home, Tony couldn't get up from the sofa, so I called 911. And when they came and they got him to the emergency room, it showed that he had blood clots all through his both legs and through his lungs. This was a, a difficult situation because they needed to give him blood thinner for the clots, but they uh, didn't want to cause a blood a bleed in his brain. Anyway, eventually Tony was transported to the VA hospital. He stayed there for 114 days. Uh, during this time, Tony was diagnosed with COVID and uh, sepsis, which is an infection of the blood. Uh, the nurse permitted our whole family to come and see him uh, because they didn't think he would make it through the night. Tony was immobile for many weeks and had to, uh, had to be moved with a lift. It was a long road back, but eventually we made it home. One time when I took him to the emergency room, they did a CT of his head, and the nurse came in and, and she looked through his charts and uh, he, she saw that he had had a glioblastoma and the, uh, the CT looked great. And she said, oh my gosh, she said, a glioblastoma, that's a death sentence. And she said, this is a miracle. And It truly is a miracle because friends, family, and celebration members prayed, and we are so thankful for all of you. Just as important was Tony's attitude. He never complained or showed any fear at any time. He was always strong in faith and believing Jesus would see him through. Uh, his, his confession was always... My confession is, I will live and not die. <clears throat> And declare the works of my God. Yeah. Uh, Tony's MRIs for the past several months have showed no cancer and it shows healing. And his oncologist said that his images are remarkable. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, give it up for Tony and Sandy. Awesome.
Buenos días, mi nombre es Jorge Badlisi y asisto a Celebration Español. When, good morning, my name is Jorge Badlisi and I assist um, Celebration Español. Antes del domingo anterior y de la conferencia del Espíritu Santo, yo era incrédulo en cuanto al bautismo del Espíritu Santo y de hablar en lenguas. Before last Sunday, in the conference of the Holy Spirit, I was not really believing in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Creía que esas manifestaciones no eran realmente sinceras. I didn't think that those manifestations of the Holy Spirit were sincere. Pero por algún motivo divino, digo yo, el domingo anterior pasé al frente del altar después de la predicación. But I believe it was a divine appointment that last Sunday I came forward for prayer during that service. Ahí me encontré con el Espíritu Santo. There I encountered the Holy Spirit. Quien, quien me bautizó con poder and he baptized me with power y me regaló una nueva lengua celestial and he gave me a new language of heaven desde ese entonces y ya hace una semana from that moment on and now a week no soy ya no soy el mismo i'm no longer the same Tengo una nueva perspectiva en mi vida. I have a new perspective in my life. Un nuevo poder dentro de mí. A new power inside of me. Y un nuevo lenguaje para comunicarme con el Señor. And a new language to communicate with the Lord. Por lo anterior, hermanos. Por lo anterior, hermanos, puedo decirles que el bautismo del Espíritu Santo sí es muy real. I can testify that the baptism in the Holy Spirit it is real. Solo tenemos que desearlo y estar abiertos para recibirlo. We just need to desire it and be open to receive it. Dios lo bendiga. Gracias. God bless you. Thank you. My name is Riddick Collier, and I'm a part of the youth ministry here at Celebration. Uh, this past spring, I actually got the opportunity to watch two of my good friends get baptized. While I was there, an old friend named Jake approached me and told me I should come to youth on, at Celebration on Wednesday nights. Now, if I'm being honest, I didn't want to go at all. But somehow, praise God, I dropped my pride and I went the next week. At this time of my life, I was as lukewarm as you could possibly get. I told others about Jesus while not knowing him myself. Now what I was doing, or I was doing what so many other 18-year-old kids do. Lust, partying, and drinking was killing me. I wanted to live for the world, and I looked towards partying for fulfillment. I had an identity problem. I saw myself as an evil person with a heart full of lust, rather than seeing myself as a child of God, which ultimately made me hide myself from him. But who knew? You don't have to clean yourself off before you get in the shower, just as you don't have to wash away your sins before you come to God. There was a man, there was a man named Jesus Christ who already did that on a cross 2,000 years ago. I did not want to give up my sinful lifestyle, so I kept going to youth on Wednesdays and parties on the weekends. I felt disappointed, sick, depressed, and lost. And then it was time for youth camp in July. As I sat through that sermon on the first night, a vision of tug of war kept replaying in my mind, except it was God on one side, the world on the other, and me as the rope. That night, he cut that rope, tugged me into my arms, and never let me look back. I'm thankful, I'm thankful to my friends at Celebration for planting that seed in me. Thank you.